Mm. What's up, guys? This sucks. It really, really sucks. I'm sure you read the thumbnail, so you probably already know that my female died. Now, I've, I've lost snakes for respiratory infections in the past, stuff like that, you know. And those of you, you see it coming, you know what's going on. It's pretty obvious how that plays out, you know. And this was totally, totally random. But not totally. I, I think, I think I might have put the clues together and figured out exactly what happened. Um, see this hole right here? That's where she was. Um, it's Lisa. And if you've watched the other videos, you would know that Lisa was clutch number one. She was the very first female to ever give me eggs, ever, my whole life. Ah. Super cool. Super cool. Crazy experience. Just, what, two, three weeks ago. And... I deeply appreciate what she did for me. She, honestly, out of 16 females in this rack that are all actively being, or were at some point, actively being paired for this season that I was hoping for uh, eggs from, out of 16, she was the one that I was almost certain wouldn't go at all. She got off food super early and only paired one time out of, I think, 10 pairings. And didn't put on size, looked thin. And I say thin, she was 1,500 grams. She's, she was plenty big enough when we started. She kept most of that weight on. She did lose, I think, 100, 200 grams, something like that, while she was putting on size. But um, she ended up giving me three surprise eggs, totally surprise eggs. And, uh, oh, man, I'm going to show the video from when I pulled the clutch. And if you look, you will see that as I start to turn the eggs over, uh, there was a gooey, slimy, yellow, it was almost like gelatinous or something. It, it, um, it was sticking to the other eggs. And the, uh, my first reaction was that it looked like one of the eggs had burst. And I, Sat there, peeled it off, and sorted out that maybe it was some sort of, again, my first clutch. So, brand new experience to me. Maybe it was some sort of a fluid that the females sometimes passed. Uh, I've watched a hundred bar check videos of him pulling python eggs, and I've never seen it before on his stuff. So, I had no clue exactly what it was. Uh, it just seemed like maybe it was something that happened every now and then. Um, well, it turns out I was wrong. Uh, I asked a couple friends that I have that are breeders that have been doing it, breeding, actively breeding, way longer than me, uh, decades longer than me. And uh, they, didn't, they didn't know what it was. They didn't recognize it. Um, I suggested that maybe it was a pop slug or something like that because it looked like the, what I've seen on videos. At that point, I had never seen a slug in person. But on videos, I've seen that slugs, when you cut them open, it's yellow inside, whatever. And since I've done cutting a slug open and seen it for myself. Um, but anyways, uh, this was... Like two days ago, every day, every single day, every morning, I check every cage 
and every afternoon I check every gauge. And I think a lot of people probably don't do that, and I don't judge them for that. Uh, I have what I would say is a pretty small collection at this point, about 32 snakes, I think, something like that. Um, and when you get to where you have 100 snakes, it's not practical to constantly check all your animals. Um, and to some extent, ball pythons are super simple. I mean, they can go, uh, they, they can go without uh, attention for a very long time and be perfectly healthy. So no judgment there. But I do check them almost constantly. Every morning, every night. And sometimes if I'm home and I'm bored, I check them throughout the day. Just because. Part of it is because I'm waiting for eggs and I'm excited about that. But the other part of it is just, you know, keeping an eye on things. And uh, anyway, so the other night I checked her and she did not look good. She looked fine. I'm not going to show you pictures because it's, uh, it's depressing. So I tell you that she just looked like a normal snake. She looked perfectly normal. Her eyes looked clear. Uh, but I could tell that she was off because she was laying with her head sideways. And when I opened the tub, she didn't perk up. Uh, so then I, she looked dead almost touched her she immediately reacted to my touch uh, but it wasn't a controlled reaction she was kind of flopping around and looked disoriented um, her eyes were clear I said that already but uh, she visually looked perfect uh, except for one thing her vent she was she had almost like a bubbling, like a, not a big bubble, but like little fine bubbles, brown discolored bubbles coming from her vent. And it looked like she was losing her bowels. So between those two things, I was almost certain that she was about to die, whatever it was. So, uh, I called a friend asked him what he thought and made sure he got, you know, confirmed what my uh, suspicion was that she was about to pass. Asked him uh, if he had any advice for me. And he basically said, you know, the only thing you can do is euthanize her at this point. Uh, he, you know, he said maybe you could get her to a vet, but I've had enough experience with dying snakes, dying animals in general. I know what a dying snake looks like. Uh, and she was way, beyond saving uh, so I called the vet and asked you know if they had a spot for me to come in the next day and what they would charge to euthanize her because um, I know some people euthanize them at home I've heard of a bunch of different methods I'm not fond of any of them I know how uh, resilient snakes are and how difficult it is to actually uh, put them down and a drawn out youth uh, you know home DIY euthanasia youth, euthanization uh, is not what she deserved so uh, I made the decision that night that if she didn't pass that night that I would bring her in the next day to get her euthanized and as I suspected, I woke up the next morning, she was dead. So I took her out. She had just passed. She, was, she wasn't even stiff yet. I uh, looked her over. She still looked exactly like she had the day before. She, looked, she almost, looked alive, uh, almost looked alive again. Like it looked like, like maybe she's just limp. Touched her. She didn't move. Double checked. Made sure she was uh, completely dead. She was dead. So then I uh, put her in a bag, put her in the freezer. I had to go to work. Froze her. Um, and then last night, this was yesterday that I, I put her in the freezer. Last night, pulled her out and soaked her in some water and thawed her out. And I did what I was, at the time, I really wasn't sure if it was legal or how, it, it's kind of a weird, fringy, like, medical procedure. But, 
it's an animal that I owned that was already perished for reasons that I suspected I could sort out on my own. So I decided to do a uh, necropsy, is what it's technically called for a, a snake. It's basically an autopsy. Um, and it did not take very long to figure out what was going on. So uh, we thought her out. I cut into her with some blades I have. And everything looked fine except for the last inch before her vent, before her cloaca. Yeah, I think that's what it's called for a snake. I know it's what it's called for a reptile or for a alligator or whatever. Cloaca. Uh, but for some reason, I, I'm not certain that it's a, I think it is a snake. I just, I might be speaking wrong. Forgive me. My mind wanders. But uh, right before the vent, the the meat, the the tissue around the well, I don't know the technical term, the part of her body that leads to the vent, the tube that the food and feces and waste pass through, that last inch was completely rotten, mush. Looked like. Uh, looked like what you'd see if you left chicken out for uh, a week. It just looked like mush. So, what I suspect happened at this point, because I expected I was, part of me was kind of hoping I would find a, a, a crumpled up, uh, a crumpled up slug shell or whatever the skin of a slug stuck in there that she'd be impacted or something like that but again i check my snakes constantly i knew she wasn't impacted she's been eating since she laid two three weeks ago she's had two meals she's been destroying food small rats i eased and was, i was easing her back into it i didn't feed her some gigantic meal and screw her up But, uh, anyways, I'm gonna, let me wrap this up because I, I, I could talk about this for a long time. But the gist of it is, uh, what I suspect is that the egg bursting, either it was the shell or a residual yolk inside of her, in her intestines, past the point where she would digest anything properly. She just had this protein sitting inside of her and it rotted for two weeks. And she was passing. She had, I was cleaning crap, it looked normal. But apparently the time between when that first meal made it to, to her, the end of her body and passed, uh, between the time that, that she laid and the time that she went, you know, past waste the first time, Whatever was in that end of her vent was just sitting there, probably rotting. And it's something that I could have never felt. She looked super, super hollow. I knew for sure there was no eggs inside of her. And when she passed, I, I felt over her again. And the only thing I could feel was a lump further up. It wasn't too big, wasn't an impaction. And when I did the necropsy, it was, it was waste. It was solid waste. It was properly digested. She was totally healthy up to that point in her body. So, moral of the story. Let my uh, experience uh, help you guys out. If you ever, ever, ever have a clutch and you see a bursted egg or what looks like the inside of a bursted egg, Take that snake immediately to the vet. Because if I would have done that two weeks ago, she'd still be around. And uh, experience teaches us a lot. This sucks. She was a cool snake. She was a normal hit pie. Nothing extravagant. I didn't pay a fortune for it. Paid a little bit, but not a fortune. So. <sighs> but 
I guess if there's anything silver in this lining, if there's any good news, it's the fact that I still have two very good eggs from her in this incubator. And one that does not look good. That's the boob egg that had most of the goo on it. Uh, but I'm going to keep it in there. I'm not pulling that sucker out. It's separated. It's by itself. I'm letting that sucker cook. I'll deal with the smell. I don't give a crap. If I get a female out of those three eggs, for sure, I'm keeping it. And I'm going to name it Lisa. Because, uh, this sucks. And I never, I never said it, but... Lisa was actually named after a co-worker of mine uh, that worked with me when I first got into ball pythons 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And she, she died. The Lisa, the original Lisa, uh, she died of an overdose, um, an accident, what we suspect was an accidental overdose. Really sudden, very depressing and sad. Uh, I was her boss at the time, and it happened while she was off, but, uh, <sighs> man, Lisa's, I don't have any luck with them, but, anyways, much love, guys, I hope this hasn't been too depressing, I'll make sure that the next video is super exciting, and that you all love it, you're gonna be so Gideon. Oh, man, it's going to be great. <sighs> but for now, that's all. Don't give me too much hate about autopsying my own snake. That's the only thing I'm worried about posting this. I hope nobody is offended by my uh, DIY procedure. But I was I learned something in the process. That's all that matters. She was uh, she was an ambassador for this message. So, again, much love. Y'all take it easy. Be good. Take care of your snakes. Keep an eye on them. If they act funny, bring them to the vet. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. But... I mean, it is worth it to go to the vet. It's not worth it to not go to the vet. But, y'all take it easy. Peace.